Hey everybody, it's Doug DeVitri, and uh, you cannot avoid the news right now with what is happening with the coronavirus. It is absolutely um, out of control as far as um, the spread of the disease and also the measures that are being put in place that are really keeping people um, at home, right? And when I wrote this book, Screen to Screen Selling, uh, I mentioned being sick as a reason to get started with this in chapter one, but this is this is something that I did not ex expect. And what's end up happening is many organizations, um, associations, uh, real estate brokerages, and agents are kind of scrambling right now to figure out how do I maintain those relationships with my customers? How can I do what I've been doing for years so that I can remain relevant and keep, keep business going as usual? And it's so interesting, just, just in my own business right now. So uh, right, right today, right now, I am in... Um, new uh, Corona Del Mar, ironically, uh, not the coronavirus, but Corona Del Mar, California. It's right next to uh, Newport Beach. I was here for a business retreat and ended up staying here a couple extra days. And um, it's just amazing what's happening right now, right? Uh, businesses are closed down. Uh, restaurants, you cannot, you cannot go there anymore. Um, in fact, uh, we're just walking into Starbucks today. All of the chairs and tables were put up. Now you can get coffee, coffee to, to go. In some of these restaurants, you can get food to go, but you can't sit there and wine and dine like you used to. And even um, the place where I work out in St. St. Louis, True Fusion, that just closed down. So it's like, what? With all these things that are happening, um, and we know that cash flow and revenue is critical to any organization, and also the costs of being able to maintain business. You know, the question now becomes: is like, how do you how do you remain relevant with this new? outbreak that at least I haven't experienced in my lifetime, and I hope we don't see anything like this again. So um, the reason for this video, right, I've kind of been silent with screen to screen selling um, for the last, uh, I guess, four years or so. This book was published in 2015 with McGraw Hill. Um, there was a huge marketing campaign push for it. You know, we sold, a, we sold a ton of copies of it. And then I kind of like got away from it because you know, I thought to myself, well, gosh, uh, this is actually, I got a stepped away from this even before Zoom uh, went public, right? And, you know, when you look at the back cover of screen to screen selling, you'll see Eric Wan, the CEO, uh, endorsing it. And boy, that whole company has taken off, right? And a lot of the principles are based upon how you can use uh, Zoom in order to, to you know, have, have better meetings, uh, to use it for sales, and then also for these virtual types of sales presentations. So, uh, and, and, and also, you know, and just having meetings, I was, I was going to have some uh, meetings with some business executives here, here in, um, in Orange County, and they, they, their offices are shut down, right? And then, you know, my, my request was, well, hey, um, well, let's have a Zoom meeting um, or, 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 or a teleconference meeting so we can uh, have this conversation. And the response was, well, you know, uh, you know the, uh, our executive does not know how to use uh, this type of tool. And I just thought to myself, oh, my gosh, if our leaders are not able to be able to hop on these calls and maintain business as usual, how are they supposed to be able to influence you know, their key stakeholders, their employees, uh, their customers. And even when you look at the, at the events that are, that, that are being canceled, right? Um, just last week, they canceled the Association Executive Institute for the National Association of Realtors. And I guess they've tried to have it uh, done remotely. And it was so interesting. Uh, 2015, uh, I put in a proposal uh, because screen screen selling had, was um, about ready to be published. And they, and they said, well, we don't want to, this isn't, this isn't relevant to us now. And I, you, you, I guarantee you you that uh, they've figured out some sort of way to be able to have their virtual event and, um, you know, for at least be able to maintain a uh, type of program so they can remain, remain relevant to their stakeholders. So what I want to do is uh, not just like sell the book, uh, because um, it is it is still more it's more relevant now than ever, but also to give you some practical uh, tips, resources that you can use to heart to have some uh, conversations with your team, um, and then 
like, okay, well, now that we have these tools, how do we develop the skills inside of these tools? So when we do meet with customers or we do have virtual sales presentations, um, we can make uh, this thing amazing. So what I'm going to do is just say, you know, can we, can, can, can we get this thing cooked? Cooking, cooking or kicked off. So one of the, one of the uh, resources that I've had, um, uh, this is free, right? Is if you go to slideshare.net uh, forward slash Doug DeVitri, this is where I keep a lot of my PowerPoint presentations. You'll see here that uh, I've have 113 slideshare presentations and this is over, gosh, over probably 12 years of uh, uploading, uploading these presentations. And then if you kind of scroll down on the right, here is the, the book outline uh, for screen to screen selling. I'll just kind of put it up here so you can kind of see it in, in, in full. So really, you know, the, the purpose of screen to screen selling was to be able to visualize conversations in a way that helps sell our ideas, products and services more effectively using the latest technology. And with that, you know, you have to be prepared uh, with the right tools uh, and also prepared with the right skills, right? So if you have the tool, but don't know how to use it, or you don't know how to mute yourself when you're having a conversation, or don't know how to share your screen when it's time, or if you try to share your screen you can't access the right resource in time and people start to get start to doze off uh preparation is so critical right and then also the dynamics of having a having a, a virtual uh conversation are a little bit different because you really have to be mindful of what somebody else is saying or what the, what they're doing um because you can get so distracted with the technology, right? Um, and then and a follow-up, like how do you follow up from these conversations so they can be effective so you're not spending time having to go through a long list of notes and so forth. And really like kind of at the, at the end of it, we talk about team performance, right? Like how do you build a culture, culture around this so that – uh, you don't have to rely on meeting face to face for uh, a lot of your different deliverables. So I'm, as I, I'm not going to scroll through and kind of go through this one by one. I'll kind of leave it up to you, and then you can ask questions um, below where, uh, where the where, below the video, so you can start to engage engage in this conversation. But this is free, right? This is something that you can just go through and look at even before buying the book. And then if you wanted to buy the book, you can go through and. Uh, start to see, okay, what chapter is going to be more, most relevant to me, right? And I think like if you move move uh, like chapter one, you know, the biggest excuse is I can't be there, right? I can't, uh, you know, the coronavirus, I can't, I can't leave my house. We have social distancing. I can't be there. Well, what's the ROI of not being able to make a business meeting, right? Or not being able to start a business meeting on time or canceling a, con canceling a conference. Like what's the cost associated with that? So chapter one is all about ROI. And so once you're able to understand the business impact of it, and I, I'm, I'm willing to bet every CFO right now is looking at the numbers saying, oh my gosh, like how are we gonna get a hold of this? And then, you know, the meeting with the chief technology officers to say, okay, well, what, do we have the right tools in place so we can engage our customers? Everybody's got to work together as a, as a team. This isn't just this isn't just siloed to one department. Even the marketing department, you know, the the, the CMO, the uh, VP of marketing, they're trying. Well, gosh, how do I increase my reach with customers because they're not showing up inside of my office anymore, right? Uh, how do I translate some of these sales conversations into? Uh, a marketing uh, content that can be reused and repurposed in order to be able to gauge customers in new ways. So I'm just going to kind of leave this here for you as a resource. In fact, if you click on screen to screen book outline, uh, it's listed right here for you. So, and I'd also encourage you to share this with your team, right? Um, the more that your team members internally can see uh, what some of the possibilities are and be able to compare what they're doing in the past, uh, boy, you're going to start to say, well, gosh, maybe there is a better way. You know, there isn't a, here's, here's something I kind of learned recently, right? There's not a wrong way, right? But there's a better way, right? So, um, you know, the microphone I had before, terrible microphone, it worked, right? But look, now I have this, uh, now I have this the Audio Technica and it's hooked up to um, the Roadcaster Pro. So, you know, I'm doing some podcasts now uh, for voice marketing for business. A lot of, so I kind of like trans, so it's so, so interesting. I transitioned from, you know, the, the author of screen to screen selling into a, a voice app developer. So now I'm building Amazon Alexa skills for business. So screen to screen selling didn't really go away. I just kind of like put it to the side because what was so interesting with my, my relationship with Zoom is I got a $10 referral check, right? A for all of the PR that, 
that, that they receive. I got a $10 referral check. So I think, okay, well, you know what? It's time for me to be a software developer instead of marketing other people's products. So, <laughs> so that's, so if you wonder like what happened to Doug, uh, that was kind of like the transition that I uh, made gosh, back, back in 2017 was when I first started uh, to, to get into voice. So um, as you start to kind of go through the book and you start to see what the options are, uh, I think what, I think really like, you know, people are starting to ask, well, what's the best software that's out there? Well, you know, it, what it really depends on is like, what are your customers using? What are they most familiar with? Do they need to be able to download an app in order to have a conversation? Because, because let's face it right now, if I'm, if I'm showing, if I'm showing a property uh, to, to, a, to a potential uh, home buyer, right? And then I ask them to download a specific piece of software. Think of all the things that could potentially go wrong if they download the software, right? So really you have to find out what the customer's most familiar with and then adapt to that. Um, because even like for FaceTime, well, well, people can't use FaceTime if they have an Android phone, right? Uh, same way, you know, they can't use uh, Google Hangouts. I guess they can use Google Hangouts if they have it, but it's it's just an extra step in the process, right? People have to create a profile with a username and password. Even the same the same conversation when it comes down to using Skype, you know, in order to have a conversation with somebody, are you going to expect them to create an account with a username and password and then find you as a connection to be able to? No, no, no. We got to take we got to pause here to really figure out how do we, as a sales professional or as a professional speaker or as a business executive, how do we start to mold around on some of the tools uh, that our that our users are most uh, adapt to, and then um, be flexible, right? Because it's not so much uh, you know using one specific tool, but it's really uh, having the skills inside of the tool that are they're going to be really useful. So um, you know that's that's a that's a big question that's just starting to come come up right now. Um, another big another big question that is coming up right now was, well, gosh, uh, my internet is super slow. How do I uh, make sure that I have a fast enough internet connection in order to have one of these conversations, right? Because the internet is the lifeblood of having a, 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 a virtual conversation. If your speed isn't fast enough, um, then guess what? It's going to kill the kill the whole deal. So I'm just going to type in real quick uh, speedtest.net. This is a uh, on, on the on, this is just a, a website that you can go to on any computer on your iPad, your iPhone, um, or your Android device. You can type it in the in, in the in the web address, and then you should start to ask, well, how do I? If I visit this website, how do what button do I click in order to test the speed of the internet? Well, it's this big button in the middle that says go. So once you do that, you start to see that uh, what the internet speed is. And right now, I'm, you know, I'm staying at an Airbnb. So, uh, you know, if I stayed at a different place, if I stayed at the Marriott, um, you know, I might have a total different connection speed. So every place that you go to, especially if you're going from place to place, hotel to hotel, location to location, office to home, or back, back and forth, you want to make sure sure that you have a fast enough internet speed. So see where it says download, it says 52.88. Um, I kind of have rules with respects to the speed of the internet that I want before I have this. Otherwise, I'm going to revert back to the phone, right? Now, what's better? Is it better to have, uh, have a sales conversation or a presentation over the phone? Or is it better to use video? Well, I'd say if you have the fast enough internet connection, we'll definitely go use video. And then you can, then you can kind of move move on from from there. So right now it says 52.88. I want to make sure that I have a minimum of 30 megabytes per second. Um, otherwise, I'm going to encourage you to use the phone. Now, can you do it with less? Uh, maybe you have you have what's called um, latency, which is kind of measures this measures uh, if there's an error, like how fast it's going to be able to connect. So um, like a tool, like the reason why I've been recommending Zoom for all these years before people even knew what it was, um, is because they are very good at being able to analyze the internet speed and then be able to make sure that they can reduce the latency. So, uh, sometimes like if you have a Skype conversation, there would be like that pause. Well, um, that's naturally going to happen if you have a, a slower internet connection, but it's going to, but <clears throat> But with a tool like Zoom, they already have that built in because they know that that's been an issue for over the years. So they've uh, went ahead and approved that, right? So internet speed is is absolutely critical when mo when moving through. So in fact, while I have this open right now, 
Um, I'm gonna actually open up Zoom so you can see kind of what this looks like as far as the application is concerned. So I already have it installed on my computer. It's already configured uh, and set up. In fact, uh, Zoom works with my online calendar and the online calendar tool that I work, use is Google Calendar and it synchronizes with my phone. So when I book a meeting, it automatically syncs with my phone. In fact, I have a scheduler too that's integrated with it. The scheduler is called Calendly. So you know, some people go back and forth, back and forth. Uh, to schedule a, a meeting, will Calendly will Calendly will set it up. So you know, there's two really two different types of meetings that you can have. One is a scheduled meeting, and then one another one is just kind of what I call a, like a like an impromptu or uh, like we're going to jump on this call really really fast. And especially where time is of the essence. So if you receive an internet lead on a form or you received a text message say it says I you know what I can meet now, you can open this up on your computer or you can open this up on your uh, phone and then be able to send the link for the invitation. So I'll just show you real quickly what that looks like. So if I click on a uh, new meeting here right now, um, and then I'm just going to click, I'm just going to move this up to the side. Normally I would join with the internet, join with using the internet audio because I have a fast enough connection here, but, um, but I'm going to kind of hold off on the audio because we're not going to, we're not going to get into that. So right here, um, at the very bottom, you can start to see that there's this menu right now. If I wanted to turn this on, I'm not going to do it right now because I have the I have the video and video uh, uh, using another tool I'm using to record this. Um, but this is where you can go and set it. Now, if I want to invite somebody to join a meeting, I just click the invite button and then I click uh, copy URL. Um, or a copy invitation, and then I will paste that link inside of the uh, email or the text message or Facebook instant messenger, whatever, or LinkedIn, whatever, whatever is the preferred method of communication or whatever the, the way that they communicated with me first is the way that I'm going to respond back uh, into, you know, cause think about that. If somebody text messages you and then you send them an email, then they have to go to the email in order to receive, to, to, to join the meeting. And many times, uh, you know, people don't have their computer in front of them and they could just have just as effective meeting in front of their phone um, for that. So there's kind of some nuances between having meetings over the phone versus through, through the computer. And probably this uh, video right now isn't the time or place for that, but just know you can quickly copy the, copy the URL and then send it off to somebody. And then where it says manage participants, You'll see that they join here. Now, one of the things one of the things to think about as far as participants go is uh, you might not be ready for them to join the meeting, right? Um, because you don't have let's let's say you don't have the right uh, uh, website pulled up for a screen share, or you don't have the right uh, uh, Excel document if you're doing a financial uh, comparison with somebody. So. Um, <clears throat> or maybe maybe you're not camera ready, right? Or um, you know you get you need to get that fixed fixed first. So there's a way where you can kind of put people in a waiting room and then admit them one by one. Uh, if it's like kind of a one on one, or if you have ten, if you have send out the link, then you can invite ten people in individually. There's so many different ways that, uh, that you can go about it, but you need to make sure that you kind of have the settings uh, set up the right way. And also, here's another huge one when you send out send out a meeting invitation, is that inside of the settings of zoom you're going to want to disable the participant camera upon entry now now write that down right because that's a hard lesson that i learned what four, uh, i guess six years ago when i first started using zoom is that i invited somebody to join a meeting that, and in my settings i enable i i had it enable participant camera upon entry and then it was a woman who had a towel on her head and i was so embarrassed i didn't i didn't and i didn't know how to shut it off at the time and guess what like um, that was, that was, that was super embarrassing that put her in an awkward situation. I was in an awkward situation. So please, 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 uh, disable the participant camera upon entry inside of your settings. I can't, I cannot, uh, stress that enough. So once you have somebody engaged in a conversation, you want to be able to turn on the video, um, you know, you can start the conversation, especially like if you're meeting somebody the first time, people are a little bit awkward about joining a video meeting um, or they don't have a camera or they're not prepared for it. Um, some cases they might be, but most cases be prepared that they won't, right? So so uh, what I'd like to share, like even in notes is say, uh, webcam is optional, right? Now I don't mind being, I don't mind being expressive, but I also want you to think about, there's a lot of benefits from somebody enabling their, their, their camera because then you're able to see uh, what they look like 
Um, you need to see what their facial expressions are when they communicate. And we know that, uh, you know, in communication, there's nonverbal communication that you don't get with over the telephone. So that's where this really comes in handy um, if somebody enables their camera. Now, again, I wouldn't necessarily require it, but but uh, just, just to kind of like, just so you know, make it uh, optional for, uh, for that. So i um, also share this with you too. This is kind of, this is kind of neat. Um, it, this is only it, out of all the tools that I've used uh, over uh, the, the, these screen to screen tools that I've used. Um, Zoom is the only one that I know that has the virtual background, right? And this is so wild. It's just like right now that when I have conversations with my clients in Kansas City, I always put the Royal Stadium and the Chief Stadium in the background uh, so I can make it a little bit more relevant to them. Or if I were to um, I, there's been other situations where I've gone onto uh, the, the, the company's office and then found the street view map uh, on Google to see what the picture of their office looks like. And then I'll add this as an image. So you see, you just, you can just click this button to add an image to the virtual background. Um, and then it's like, Hey, I'm right outside your office, but I'm really not. So it's just one of those fun ways of being able to, you know, differentiate yourself. Now notice this, this is so, um, there is no green screen behind me, right? This there's actually I'm a win like, I'm going to click none here. There's no green screen behind me, but if I click this, look how, I mean, look how good the quality is. Now, if I did have a green screen, it would look a whole lot better, um, but, but you don't necessarily need that. In fact, there was one time where I had a business meeting uh, while I was on a kayak, right? The craziest thing is like, why would you be on a kayak on a meeting? Well, I don't know. I just, that's just where I was at the time. And then I activated the green screen background and nobody knew that I was kind of uh, on my kayak, um, so I don't know, there's different ways you can go about doing it, but I want you to know this, this virtual background here is a pretty cool feature that, uh, that Zoom gives you. Also something to think about too, is you can share your screen with anybody. So it's kind of, you follow this, follow this uh, click on share, it's a little box with the arrow pointing up. And then it, any one of these uh, applications that are already open, uh, what I like to do is I like to share my desktop um, so that it, people can see everything. But one thing I didn't do, which I should have done is close down all of these applications ahead of time. Uh, so then that way, um, you know, I'm not worried about something popping up, uh, during a conversation. And also just like we're, as we're talking about while sharing your screen, uh, you wouldn't disable all of your desktop notifications. So, you know, so if somebody sends you a text message or Facebook instant messenger or a LinkedIn message, or, you know, uh, people get email notifications, make sure you disable those because if you do a desktop screen share and somebody sends you an instant message right there, you, um, and it's like the wrong message, you don't want some, one of your customers to see that could be totally that could totally be embarrassing and i only speak from experience of how many times i've embarrassed myself by doing thousands of these conversations over time um so uh there's a couple options where you can have a uh, digital whiteboard where you're drawing on a screen and probably now uh we won't have enough time to be able to discuss that in this video um, but there's some really cool whiteboard options that allow you to start to frame conversations and add in visuals really quickly uh, to be able to support the process. Because when you look at it like a meeting, right, I think many people think uh, like a meeting has to be an hour um, or let's say 30 minutes. Well, I don't know. My, my idea of a meeting is let's get as much of this done as quickly as possible so we can go back to doing the, 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 the real work. And as far as like meeting meetings go, uh, think about this 70% of a meeting is done before the meeting even sh before you even s show up. So that's like a difference between like showing up face to face versus a, versus a virtual uh, meeting. You would have 70% of your preparation done ahead of time because that's going to decrease the time that you spend on the meeting and then you can have um, be more productive and, and, and effective. Um, and then, you know, there's also been situations where you might want to uh, uh, mirror whatever's on your phone. So if you want it needed to demonstrate an uh, like a mobile app, let's say you have the uh, the National Association of Realtors Realtor Property Resource app installed in your phone, and you wanted to show somebody how they can uh, see see what the reports that they get from your mobile phone that you can send to them. Um, 
you know, perfect. Now, obviously they can't use the app themselves because that's a member benefit, but maybe it's, maybe it's, maybe it's your uh, real estate brokerage app that you want to be able to show somebody how to, how to use. And you can do that really effectively um, inside of Zoom. So I'm going to kind of, I'm actually going to go here to share desktop. And so when you think about this right now, uh, I'm sharing my screen during the meeting. I can, I want to make sure that I have any websites pulled up before the meeting starts, because, you know, if you start to type in uh, things, in real time, you it might uh, you might get the wrong item, or if it's not uh, already saved as a bookmark, um, the, you know the more time that you take during a meeting to be able to retrieve resources, you know people will sit there and be waiting, right? Waiting, 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 or you're trying to find a file or a document, waiting, waiting, waiting. Uh, it's a good idea to have some of these pulled up ahead of time. So. Um, you know, wanted you to be able to see that. Also, like I have bookmarks here for different for different tools. So this is just inside. I use Google Chrome. So I have the bit bookmarks for the tools that I use on a regular basis. So that way I don't have to go in and type in. Also, another big one, another huge time saver while you're in screen share is that um, uh, I use a tool called LastPass, right? And so if I need to be able to log into an account, I mean, how many times have you been in a, on a conversation with a customer and then you can't log, you can't log in, right? Or you say, oh, I'm sorry, can you give me five minutes? I have to reset my password. Well, that's, again, think about the customer experience, right? It's just a really poor experience. So, so LastPass is one of those tools that allows you to do that. And then, um, so while you're on one of the, you know, screen share, you can pull it up uh, really quickly. So that's the screen share component. Another big time saver is going to be your participant chat, right? So I'm going to go ahead and pull out. I'm going to go ahead and uh, click on this as far as chat goes. And then um, this is just you having a conversation with that individual inside of your um, you know, your video collaboration tool. So if you wanted to say hello, uh, everyone. You could type that in, or if you wanted to, so think about this, if I wanted to get the link here, I could then copy and paste it and make it available. And so that little shortcut right there, uh, controls, it's, well, on a MacBook, it's uh, Command C for copy and then Command V for paste. You wanna get really good at those shortcuts, right? So uh, Command Command A is select all, uh, Command C is copy, Command V is paste, Command uh, T is open up a new tab in a browser, Control Command K is insert a hyperlink, um, and there's a shortcuts, right? And those are all listed. Those are all listed in the book, screen to screen selling, just as a resource. So I encourage you to kind of look at that. So um, there's also options for you to be able to share files um, that, uh, whether they're in Dropbox, Google Drive, uh, OneDrive, or just your computer natively. That way you can keep all. You know, it's like okay, I'll email this to you, right? But if but if you but if if we're inside of the conversation, I just might want to send it here. So so only the people that are on the meeting will have access to it. And also think about this too. This chat transcript becomes a great thing that you can save, so that you can share with the customer afterwards. So it's a huge time saver as far as taking notes go, because all the links you're going to send to somebody by email, you could just type it into chat, and not, they can have them and look at them right there while they're talking to you, or you can send them to you, them afterwards um, using the chat. So um, let's see if there's any other big ones that I want to put up. That's probably like the biggest ones as far as just having these kind of one-off meetings. Um, uh, Zoom has so many more options to be like, if you start to upgrade your account, you can go uh, live on Facebook and that's something we might do for another video, or you can go live on YouTube. And uh, that way it inter 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 like works, let's say for, for, at least for Facebook, you can have it, um, uh, pu publish the video live on Facebook, uh, like profile for a page or for, a, let's say you're the host of a group. Um, you have that type, uh, you have that ability to do that. So, boy, there's so many different ways that you can start to approach this, but really it comes down with, to having uh, the, uh, <clears throat> you know, having the right tools but also developing the skills inside of the tools so you're a little bit more effective and having these conversations. And so then that way, when you look at, well, what can I do without having to, to, to physically be there? Or let's say if I have, have, have uh, I, I need to go somewhere, but my customer can't, then, you know, obviously you can, you can, you can start to do this right from your mobile phone, right? So there's different ways of being able to, um, 
uh, interact with your customers. So I just encourage you again, you know, go get the book. Uh, I'll go ahead and pull up the link here. It's screen to screen selling, um, how to increase sales productivity and the customer experience with the latest technology. It was published by McGraw Hill and we all know McGraw Hill is a big, big publisher. Um, and all the resources like there are, if like, if actually I'm going to, I'm going to pull it up right now. If you go to Doug forward slash press, pull this up because this has a lot of the different things that are on here. So I know realtor magazine did a, did a bunch of features uh, way back when um, been interviewed on a number of different podcasts and we're from, uh, from real estate to association management uh, to, to different sales or for, for training and development. So boy, uh, you have these resources. I'll go ahead and put them at the at the bottom of the link, and then please ask questions, right? Because I am here to help. I'm here to serve. Even though screen to screen selling hasn't been in in like the top of what I've been putting out, a lot of stuff I've been doing is for voice marketing for business and developing voice apps. But this is a huge body of work, and the book is thick, right? It's so funny when I when I when I started taking taking the taking this out on the road, like it's a textbook, and somebody picked it up and was like, "Wow, this is a real book." Um, because you know, many books now it's so easy to self publish. Like this is a legitimate book and you know, uh, there's a lot of different use cases from, uh, real estate agents that have been using it, um, and brokerage. So, uh, I encourage you to check it out. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video, uh, but please, please don't be afraid to reach out and ask questions. And then, um, you know, we'll hope to see you on the next video. Cause we're going to start doing a little, a few, few more of these as moving forward. So hope you have an amazing day. God bless. And we'll, we'll see you next uh, screen to screen.